Good afternoon, viewers, and thank you for tuning in to Recount Watch. I am Vanelda Harris, and joining me live from the Art Chang Conference Center is PPPC candidate, Mr. Colin Kroll. Colin, good afternoon, and thank you for joining me. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to join you today. Um, however, briefly, because I'll have to resume shortly at my workstation. Yes, definitely. So, Colin, um, what we want to touch on is basically the claims that the APNU AFC has been made, making since the start of the recount. What we have seen, especially in the Region 4 area, is them calling out serial numbers and claiming that there are dead persons and migrated persons that would have voted the in general regional elections. Now, we know that these are just claims to create mischief and chaos throughout the entire country. And it is their desperate attempt to try to discredit the election results, because we know that at the end of the recount, what those results will show, and it will show that the People's Progressive Party Civic won these elections by over 15,000 votes. So being a recount agent for the PPPC down there at the recount center, Colin, what are your comments on this issue? Oh, sure. Well, let, let me say this. Um, I just started Region 4 this morning, because um, when I started, I started Region 1. Then I participated with Region 5. I also participated in Region 9. And coming to 4, it's, you can sense the room is a bit, it's feeling a bit different and it's got hot and it's got much hot this morning. Now, the issue is, and I'll give you a blatant example. We were, we were at one polling station and the PPPC received maybe about nine votes. At the AP and U, they received about 200 and something votes. There was no query. Absolutely no query. And immediately after that, where one that the the mixture of the votes were balanced, immediately the the app news counting agents went started to call off a number of serial numbers. In fact, when she started the call, she was calling off, can you indicate to the supervisor, can you indicate whether the number is ticked or not? So I intervened, I said, Well, what is your query? Because you can't be asking if it's ticked for nothing at all. And that is when she would have indicated, yes, I'm checking for a person because these persons allegedly were out of the jurisdiction on the day, on election day. And she would have called out about 48 to 450 numbers. And maybe you had about two or three that were ticked. And then the, it became a query. But all of this, as I, as I said, coming from last night too, with the statement that was issued by the APNU in terms of the recognition of the elections, they were the ones that were jumping up. They were the ones shouting, let the blow, 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 and so forth. Now that you cannot hide behind this, the numbers here at the recount because it, the process is transparent. And your tabulation is done every afternoon as you, as you complete your, your station. And so they cannot, they cannot change what is happening here. And that's why you have that amount of desperation, alleging so many persons are deceased and voted when it was a foolproof system whereby persons had to go through a process. They were counting agents, they were polling agents for the political parties present on election day, including the AP and UAFC polling agent who sat there, who signed those statement of polls, who for whom the AP and you have never to date and GCOM released the copy of the statement of polls. And so all of these allegations that you see coming forward now is all of, to create mayhem and to create confusion, to take away from the fact that the People's Progressive Party Civic won this election fairly and spirit. And I also want to use the opportunity to bring in the point of what has happened, whereby we learned last week that the, the chairman of GCOM would have wrote the Commission of Police uh, based on some allegations that was of list that was provided the AP and UAFC. And we have seen many persons coming forward now to say that they were here, they never even left this place. So how could have they have been recognized as persons who were out of the jurisdiction? And they, are, they have signed affidavits to these effects. Now, this is not the role of the GCOM chairman. This exercise when we started was an exercise to ensure that we have a recount done for all of the ballot boxes, all of the 10 districts. And on the completion of those recounts, then you will have the declaration to be done by GCOM. But what have they done instead? 
they are now concentrating to use this reconfort with the observation reports. And every day there's a battle as to what can go into the observation report and what cannot. Even up to just now, this morning, mid-morning, all the supervisors were called to a meeting. When they came back, the supervisors informed, the, the supervisor informed us that there was a change. I'll give you a typical example. There is what you call a rejected, various means of which you can have a rejected ballot. One of which is when you don't have the six digit number. They came back and they said that they were instructed that they will have to write the party for whom that person voted when it's a rejected. And so I said, what about all the others? They said, it's not applicable only to that one. And now they're also trying to change the language on the observation report in terms of the validity, because they want to insert the word, the validation of the, of the ballots. This is not a rule for the GCOM here. The rule of the GCOM here is to count the ballots in the box. We know what is in there. These, box, the, these boxes were all sealed. They were well protected. We all have our figure. And that it is their role to just to, co to correspond, correlate, and to see what the recount figures shows, and then prepare those statements of recount. That is all, simply that. Everything else is for a re, uh, an election petition for them to deal with. Yes, definitely, Colin. And uh, the chair, like you said, she has, this is out of her bounds. She cannot deal with these allegations. She cannot deal with these claims. They have to go to, and they have to go to the court through an elections petition and raise their concerns there for this to be dealt with. GCOM does not have the authority to deal with these claims. And uh, I don't know if you, you saw Bino, Mr. Bino asking for GCOM, the GCOM chair, to launch an investigation to find out who would have voted for him after his name would have appeared on the list by the police commissioner as, ha as having been out of the country on elections day. And uh, he's asking the chair to launch an investigation into that. And this definitely is not in her, her But that too, is not, that too is nonsensical. Because first of all, how can, how can, one, how can you determine um, what, what direction a particular individual voted? It is very clear. They themselves recognize and they know that all these procedural matters are for an election petition. So for that letter that was written by Bino, it has no bearing on this recon process. There is, a, there is a place for that, there is a stage for that, and when that should be done. And so for the chairman to even, in, I'm not sure what she will do with that letter, but if they for the entertain um, any letter, any direction from that uh, request, then she too is, has, she has already gone out to the realm of what she should be doing. And so it will just be, they'll just be engaging in activities that are not, not related to the we are here today is day 30 we are here for over 30 days this exercise could have been completed well within the stipulated 25 days but the reason why we are here is because of the ap and uafc extending the whole process and that is focusing on the observation report so whereby they want everything to be stated in the observation report every comment everything that they want to be stated there, and it has no bearing on the ballots that are in the box. Those ballots were placed in envelopes, every single one of the ballot box, the ballots were placed in envelopes inside of those boxes. And that is what we're here to check those ballots. Simply, that's all we're here to do. Anything else is outside the realm of this recount exercise. Now, Colin, I just want to take a few minutes to play this video where we can see persons from all across Guyana who would have come forward publicly to disprove APNU's claims of them being out of the country on Elections Day. So viewers, just have a look at it. This is my ID card. My name is Himal Tarai Silchan. I'm residing in Champaign, Maikoni Creek. On March 2nd, I voted at Champaign Primary School, which is next door to my home where I reside in. I, did, I didn't have a visa. I did not leave Guyana for the past 15 years. My name is Annette Reddy. 
and this is to prove that I I have voted on election day at Two Miles Primary, and this is my ID card. So, if you could see my number, my ID number, this is me here. So I'm not dead, and I, I did not migrate, so this is the proof. This is my proof. My name is Kevin Marvin Van Brook. I live at Lock 21, Section A, Country Village, West School, Barbies, on March 2nd. I voted at the um, Country um, Nursery School, and this is my ID card. Never I never went to the country, okay. and I live in Guyana. Ramchuran. I live at 12 Cotton Tree Village, West Coast Barbies. On the 2nd of March, I voted at the Cotton Tree Nursery School. I living in Guyana, I did not go anywhere. And this is my ID card. Hey, my name is um, Christopher Marvier. I live at um, Cotton Tree Village, Lot 14, Section A. Um, this is my ID card, and I voted at the Cotton Tree Nursery School on March 2nd. And I never left the country. My name is Puran Ramu. I live at Lot 7, Section A, Cotton Tree Village. I voted on the 2nd of March 2020 at the Cotton Tree Nursery School. This here is my ID card. I never leave this country to go anywhere. So viewers, there you have it. And Colin, as we can clearly see, APNU's claims of persons being, well, dead and migrated, that video was based on persons that they claimed were migrated, who do not even have passports and have not even left our jurisdiction for over five years in some cases. So their claims are ridiculous. They have no weight. And we have seen this coming just right after the start of the recount in an effort to discredit the elections because like we know, the PPPC is definitely, as we have seen so far, the SOPs are matching the SOR figures, and uh, APNU is exposing their own spells. Yeah, let's face it, let, let's say it as it is. Because of APNU's failure to be able to utilize the Mingo rigging numbers, it, the, all other process, everything that they've engaged subsequently is to go towards discrediting these elections. And that is all. And why do they want to discredit it? Because they can't, just cannot change the number, the ballots, the physical ballots that are there, those papers, those mm -hmm. pieces of paper. You can't change that. You can change whatever spreadsheet you want. You can change whatever table, but you just cannot change the physical ballots. And that is what we're doing here, checking the physical ballots. And so the game is up, and that is why you would have had that statement last night. So the game is up. They have been exposed. And those are only a sample of the persons who are coming forward. Only this morning, I received a message from um, Region 1, uh, where um, I think they're taking a camera to, to, to video someone because that person is there, and they are alleged that they were out of the jurisdiction on election day. And when them, they themselves, then they were sitting there in the polling station. I cannot re help but re-emphasize it. They were there throughout the process. Like the PVPC, they were able to put up polling agents right across this country. So they had representatives at that polling station. And not one of those polling stations, not one of those poll book mentioned anything to the effect of any agent, any APNU agent objecting to anyone who had voted. And so that is where it started. And that is where it will end because you just cannot change the numbers. And the script that they, the narrative that they're all up to is to inflate the observation report based on frivolous allegations, unproven allegations, and, and even some of them criminal because you're making allegations that are not true, then somebody has to pay for this. And I'm even surprised that the commissioner of police and the and as someone was telling me the quickness in which he had responded, because you try to get a matter for them to resolve or check some information, you realize how it will take. In this case, they responded in two days, which says to me that they would have gotten up whatever information, I don't know, whatever information. And then that is what they sent off with the AFNU sent off. So it was just to create the paper trail. And at the end of the day, this nonsense has to stop. 
the People's Progressive Party for it has won this election fairly and squarely. We have won it on the back, the hard work and the commitment and the dedication towards ensuring that we campaign throughout this country on policies and programs. And that is what we went to the people to sell to the people. What did they, they campaign? They didn't campaign on policies and programs. They were campaigning on attacking individuals. And, and even now you're getting that. So at the end of the day, this nonsense has to stop now. And the more our people out there realize that how much what the AP and UAFC is up to, you will understand what we are playing with. I'm really sorry that I have to go back because my station is, is restarted. So, of course, I'm happy to join with you and join with you later down too because um, as I get more into Region 4, uh, we're on the hot bed, we're on East Coast. So, you know, within the next today and the next two days, it's going to be really hot because those are where the majority of the Mingo's rigging numbers, um, you can see it at the polling stations. And it's already um, started. So, um, Colin, thank you for joining us and thanks for the update. Um, we would love to have you back at a later time. Do thank enjoy you. the rest of the day. You too. Thank you very much.